Good morning and aloha to everybody. Uh, first of all, just a couple of uh, logistics. Uh, we are running this uh, Zoom meeting out of uh, my office and uh, Congressman-elect uh, Kaheli's uh, uh, folks are helping out. Uh, so um, if we can uh, please stay uh, mute, but then uh, once you want to ask a question, just unmute. You can do the chat uh, you can you, you can do the raise your uh, hand also, but uh, I think it's a small enough group that we can have a little bit less formal conversation. So uh, when we get to that, uh, just communicate. You can always uh, also uh, uh, chat your question on in. Uh, first of all, aloha to everybody. Good morning, aloha to all of us that are joining us here today and to Congressman-elect Kaheli. It's so good to see you uh, right there. Um, look, across our country, voters chose and democracy has prevailed. Um, this election could not come at a more critical time for our country and for our Hawaii. Uh, COVID is getting worse across our country. Uh, division and polarization is just as extreme as it was uh, today in our country. Unfortunately, the results of that polarization are that many folks feel like winners, but many folks feel like losers. And that's not the way it should be, but it is the way it is. We have to be honest about that. We have critical issues in, in this country, aside from COVID-19, starting with our economy. And here in Hawaii, of course, uh, uh, devastation from COVID-19. Our federal government must be at the forefront and our Congress must produce for all Americans. And our delegation must produce for Hawaii. For a small state like Hawaii, we only have four members of our delegation, just four, two senators and two representatives. And if that delegation is not pulling on all cylinders altogether, our state will suffer. But as that delegation can pull together and operate together, we can do the job that needs to be done for our Hawaii. Since 1959, since statehood, we have only sent 14 of our own to the United States House of Representatives, starting with Senator then Representative Daniel Inouye in 1959. Uh, he followed on great uh, foundations such as Delegate John Burns, and of course, going back a century, uh, Delegate Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole. The last two years, I've worked very, very well with my colleague, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, Tulsi has served us well for eight years and she is moving on now. We wish her the very best. But today, I'm really proud to introduce Hawaii's U.S. House delegation for the 117th Congress. My new teammate, Congressman-elect Kai Kaheli, leaves tonight on his own journey to representing Hawaii on Capitol Hill. And he follows in the footsteps of all, all of those that come before him. He is as well prepared as any of us has, have ever been to go to Capitol Hill, and I expect really great things of him for all of us. Uh, Kai and I share much of our own history and heritage. Uh, we're both very, very proud uh, ELO boys, that's a B-O-Y-Z, uh, and we know what FBI really stands for. Um, we have a shared upbringing, which uh, gives us, I think, the same appreciation for special people and places of Hawaii, and I think we have shared values that we grew up with and carry with us. Of course, for any delegation, for any team, that's a great foundation to build on, shared values, shared visions, shared backgrounds. And my full commitment is to get him up and running and to support his development and our partnership in every way I possibly can. I'm eagerly looking forward to serving with Kai, along with Senators Schatz and Hirono. It's a very, very solid team for Hawaii, and it's a team that we can really find our ways that we don't even, I think, expect uh, today. Uh, to work together for the betterment, not only of our country, but especially for Hawaii. And so for me, it's just a really uh, great honor and privilege uh, uh, to, turn, uh, to turn this uh, uh, conference over now to the person at the center of it from my perspective, and that is uh, my longtime friend. We've known each other for 20 years now, uh, and now my colleague to be, and very shortly my colleague, uh, Congressman-elect Kai Kaheli. Kai, take it away. All right. Well, thank you so much, Congressman Case. You know, you, you said many things in your opening statement, and I think the one that resonated to, with me the most was the word team and the word teammate. Uh, and I just think back to my uh, early 20s when I was a member of the University of Hawaii men's volleyball team uh, that, that, that just, you know, led and captivated Hawaii and went to a national championship. And I was never a starter on that team. Uh, because there were a lot of other guys that were much, much better uh, volleyball players than I was. But I knew what my role was in the team, and I did everything I could possibly do uh, to make that team better and to strengthen that team uh, and to, to position it uh, to be in the best position for success. 
And so that is exactly what I'm looking to do uh, with yourself and with the other uh, members of our delegation, our United States senators. And, and we need the best team in Washington, D.C. right now to help Hawaii and help navigate Hawaii through the economic and health crisis that the coronavirus has, has laid bare here in Hawaii. And so I'm looking forward to serving with you. I can't wait to leave tonight uh, to start freshman orientation at the end of the week. There's so much to do. The 117th Congress convenes in uh, about 50 five days from now. And between standing up offices in DC and Hawaii and hiring uh, staff uh, to staff those offices and build my team um, to make sure I'm on committees that can help complement the committees that you're on and that the, our other US senators are on uh, and you know, do everything I can to help, uh, to help be that team, teammate for Hawaii. I wanna thank the voters of Hawaii who participated in a historic election and those that uh, stood in long lines uh, late night on election night to make sure their voice and their vote was cast and was heard. I want to mahalo them for record voter turnout. I want to mahalo the people of Hawaii and the second congressional district for selecting me to represent and be their voice in the United States Congress. This is not a path I ever thought I would be on at this stage in my life. I'm 46 years old and you know I thought I would be flying for Hawaiian Airlines for the rest of my career raising my young family, living in Hilo, and uh, teaching young Air Force pilots how to fly. But five years ago, that's not what life had in, uh, you know, that in, in store for me. And, and just you know, that opportunity, unfortunately, after my dad's passing, that Governor Ige gave me to serve in the state Senate for the last four years that helped propel me and prepare me to go to Washington and to represent Hawaiian Congress, I'm deeply grateful for. I'm also, uh, you know, grateful that I get the opportunity to walk in the footsteps of people like Senator Dana Kaka, uh, only the first and only Native Hawaiian since statehood to ever walk the halls of Congress. He was a mentor to mine, and I can't wait to help uh, be a voice for Native Hawaiians on the national stage. And finally, being somebody who has grown up their entire life, like Congressman Kay said, a Hilo boy on the Big Island, you know, I can't wait to bring my unique perspective of being a neighbor island resident to the delegation and to be that voice for the neighbor island communities that uh, have suffered greatly because of uh, COVID-19 and the coronavirus. So again, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much, Congressman Case, for putting this together. I've said it on many different podcasts the last few days. Uh, Hawaii is, um, is going to be uh, pleasantly surprised by the dynamic team that is gonna represent Hawaii in the United States House of Representatives and uh, Congressman Case and I are going to work very closely together. We already have been, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to serving with him and, and delivering for Hawaii. Uh, thank you so, thank you so much, uh, uh, Congressman-elect uh, Kahele. Um, I guess I can call you Kai in public, and you can call me Ed. Absolutely, we uh, can need to stand by ceremony at least uh, at least here while we're home. Um, you'll have to figure that out for yourself when you get to get to DC. <laughs> Uh, okay. With that, you know, rather than uh, uh, us talk anymore, we, we would love to uh, uh, hear whatever questions uh, folks on, on the line have. And if you, um, I, think, I think our logistics folks will recognize you and uh, go ahead. I think it's in the chat. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and read it, Kai? I actually, sure, you uh, bet. I'll read it. My okay, phone, this is so from uh, chat. this is from Casey Harlow uh, from HPR uh, for both uh, myself and Congressman Case. What are your thoughts on the possible closure of Dillingham Airfield and the impact it will have on local businesses that operate there? Well, I'm going to defer to Congressman Kaheli since it's sure. in his district. <laughs> you bet. So, thank you so much for the question. You know, I'm proud to represent the North Shore and the second congressional district uh, of, of uh, the windward side of Oahu. I am uh, totally opposed to the closure of Dillingham Airfield and the State Department of Transportation's decision to do that. I have uh, voiced my uh, concerns to uh, the Director of Transportation, Jade Butai, uh, and uh, the Department of Transportation Airports Division. I think we have to come up with another solution. I, I strongly support and stand with State Senator Gil Revere 
and um, State Representative Sean Quinlan on the North Shore. As somebody who is an airline pilot, who learned how to fly in Hilo, Hawaii, I know how important general aviation is to children of Hawaii who want to learn how to fly and who fly out of Dillingham Airfield. I know how important our small businesses that operate out of Dillingham Airfield are. You know, there's only a very, very few places where you can do skydiving tours and you can do unique uh, things that they do at Dillingham and, and closing Dillingham will uh, result in the closure of many small businesses and people that lose their jobs and the lack of opportunity um, to pursue and promote general aviation in Hawaii. We have a, you know, Dillingham is a, is a you know, our marriage with the, with the military and the United States Army and the state in Dillingham creates a complex uh, uh, scenario. And it's something we need to sit down uh, with um, U.S. Army Pacific and, and, and the colonels and, and the commanders there to figure out what is a way that we can continue to keep Dillingham open. Uh, we can invest in the infrastructure improvements it needs with, its, with, with the water system there and other things that are really important. But also, you work together with the U.S. Army to make sure that they can train there because the U.S. Army uses Dillingham to train and to do um, different types of training scenarios at both at day and at night. And so I, I hope that answers your question. But um, I do stand with... Uh, the residents of the North Shore who want to keep Dillingham Airfield open and the state of Hawaii needs to do that. I would, I would only add to uh, Kai's answer that um, this is a good example of, of I think working together um, as a team. I think, um, you know, on the national level, we're not, we're not always going to agree on um, issues and that's fine. That's as it should be. We're not, we're not clones of each other. We have our own thoughts, our own perspectives, and uh, we took our own uh, presentations to our constituents. And we have, uh, although the constituencies of the first and the second congressional are in many ways alike, um, the second congressional having represented uh, the second for over four years is its own unique district. And so <clears throat> generally within the delegation, we try to uh, respect uh, the, the, the member that actually represents uh, that, uh, that district from the perspective of what him or her he or she wants to uh, accomplish for the district. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, <clears throat> throughout the whole period of time since we've had two representatives for Hawaii, uh, each of us has operated um, at large effectively because voters don't really think about <clears throat> district lines. Um, and the key there to make that work is that there be constant and ongoing communication between the two members of the delegation to make sure uh, that we're on the same page and where we're not on the same page to try to try to work it out as, as well as we can. I think we've been very blessed uh, with our congressional delegations over time uh, that the uh, front has been quite a united one when it comes to key issues uh, throughout uh, Hawaii itself. You know, it, j just, just to piggyback on that. So the state of Hawaii Department of Transportation leases Dillingham from the United States Army. So, um, you know, like Congressman Case said, uh, bringing the different parties together and figuring out how we can have a path forward for Dillingham is, is, is very, very important. You know, one of the committees I hope to serve on is armed services, uh, just like Congresswoman Gabbard uh, is currently serving on that committee. And, and that's a unique committee that, that can have an influential voice um, when working with the uh, military uh, leadership here, in, in particular at the um, U.S. Army Pacific and USERPAC. Okay, um, Annalisa? Yeah, Annalisa has a question. All right, hi guys, thank you so much. Me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, um, so this is for you, for, actually it could be for both of you, but um, primarily for you, uh, Congressman-elect Kahele. So you ran on the platform um, of really putting Native Hawaiian and Indigenous rights um, on the forefront and wanted to get uh, I guess more details on how you plan on improving our system when it comes to uh, administering the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. And, you know, because as we know, uh, the department has been slow in getting a lot of those concerns addressed. They have been, and I, I at different times have been critical of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and, and, uh, the leadership there, but I am also somebody who wants to help make things better. And, and it is just unacceptable 
when we have, you know, 40 to 45,000 people on a list or on multiple lists, and they just have not been able to get a lease, a home, a parcel for farming. Uh, there's so many different things that, that DHHL can do to increase the economic uh, prosperity of Native Hawaiians across the state. Um, and, and they're struggling at doing it, you know. And so the state's trust responsibilities through um, uh, being accepted into, uh, you know, statehood and it, the constitution that we have, the Hawaii State Constitution, transfers the execution of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act and the management of the entire program to the state of Hawaii. And for years that has um, been severely underfunded, which is one of the reasons why they haven't been able to develop as much housing as they would have liked to do. You know, but I think there is a unique role that the Department of Interior has in working together with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Uh, we've, you know, at different times when I have been in the legislature, I've looked at um, possible amendments to the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Obviously, it would have to be taken up by the United States Congress, uh, but the state legislature has passed several pieces of legislation uh, that is awaiting possible introduction by a member of Congress um, to address those things. At the end of the day, you know, we just need to try and come together and do whatever we can to do what Prince, you know, Congressman Case mentioned Prince Cohill's uh, name in his opening statement. Uh, the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, he was able to get that through the Congress 100 years ago in 1920. The fact we're sending a native Hawaiian back to Congress 100 years after that is historic. But the fact that we still have 40,000 native Hawaiians that are still on a list, that are dying on a list, uh, that we haven't been able to use the trust assets to its maximum ability uh, means that we, there's something wrong and we need to fix it. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to working with Chair Isla and DHHL, the Department of Interior, to figure out what are the things that we can do at the federal level um, to help DHHL in their core mission, which is what Prince Cohill always envisioned and said, aina ho'opulopula put people on the land and let them farm, uh, let them raise their families, let them ranch, let them start small businesses. That's what we need to do. We need to empower Native Hawaiians uh, across this state. And, and I hope to be able to voice as a Native Hawaiian in Congress to do that. I agree with everything uh, Kai just said. Um, we have um, um, between us, of course, the, 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 the first and the second the largest constituencies of Native Hawaiians of any congressional district in the entire country for obvious purposes. But let's, let's recognize that we both uh, are responsible for representing uh, the, the, the significant number of the Native Hawaiians uh, that are anywhere in our country or our world uh, today. And it is our responsibility to represent them in Congress. That's always been the unique responsibility of the members of Congress uh, from Hawaii. And I take that responsibility uh, very seriously. Uh, in the same breath, um, I very much believe that I should uh, defer and, and listen in particular to Kai on these issues, uh, given his own uh, um, special focus on, on Native Hawaiians. I hope I have a lot to add uh, to the conversation. Um, certainly, I've been working hard on behalf of Native Hawaiians during my prior time in Congress, as well as my current time. And top of mind is uh, the, the, uh, the, the century mark of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. And as he said, at the outset, it's unacceptable uh, where it is today and for that matter, where it's been for decades now. Um, I once heard a beneficiary say something that struck me uh, and it stayed with me. Uh, she said that uh, Prince Cujillo's Hawaiian Homes uh, Commission Act was beautifully conceived uh, and wrongfully um, um, implemented. And I think that's exactly right. Um, the state of Hawaii does have the primary responsibility, but as Kai pointed out, this is a federal law. Uh, and the federal government has every, every right to oversee uh, the implementation of a federal law. As a practical matter, it's been a, roughly a quarter century since we really took a deep dive into exactly how that Hawaiian Homes Commission Act at the federal level um, is actually uh, set up and working. Uh, so, so many of the issues that we're dealing with here today uh, could possibly uh, be remedied or at least advanced along uh, by efforts at the national level to amend the law itself. Um, and we want to do that very, very carefully um, because we, we don't want to do away with the, with the, the beautiful construct that, that uh, Prince Cujillo came up with. Uh, but we need to do this. And so I think that that's well, one area that I certainly want to pursue with Kai and with the rest of our delegation uh, long overdue. Uh, Nick Grube. 
Hey, gentlemen. Um, I, I, I wanted to uh, ask each of you this question, but probably starting with Congressman Case on um, what the prospects are for getting a new COVID re relief deal done before the end of the year and what we might expect that to look like. Um, and then, of course, uh, what uh, each of you would like to see in a deal um, and, you know, whether or not it would be better to actually put one together after Joe Biden is in the White House. Thanks, Nick. Well, I don't think it's an either or situation. I think, first of all, let's realize that uh, uh, Donald Trump will be uh, uh, president until January. Uh, the Senate will remain um, as it is until January. Uh, the U.S. House will remain as it is until January. So we're talking about uh, seven weeks until uh, anything actually changes. Uh, so the question is, uh, have uh, folks that have not uh, supported um, a COVID-19 emergency assistance package going to change their minds and uh, negotiate an acceptable deal between now and the end of the year. I think the prospects are, are um, I, I don't want to rule it out. I, I guess I'm not going to say I'm optimistic about it because um, I thought one should have been um, enacted a long, long time ago. And I felt that uh, the compelling needs out there in the rest of the country would lead uh, uh, us of all stripes in Washington, D.C. to reach an actual compromise. It seems to have been the case that many people uh, determined that that was best done after the election, or at least they wanted to get through the election before facing it. Uh, but now we're out coming up on the end of the year. The needs have only worsened uh, throughout the country. And so I think it's, it's, it's a distinct possibility we could pull something off, although it's still the same overall um, um, political environment. And so it would have to be at the end of the day, a compromise package, uh, less than what I think we should do. But to your point about where the focus needs to be uh, across the board, clearly uh, the four pillars of, of, of the CARES Act to start with, um, assistance to our uh, businesses, especially our small businesses, assistance to our state and local governments in order to um, uh, handle uh, discretionary needs that may be different from state to state, uh, certainly direct impact uh, payments, uh, again, uh, to to our, our needy families throughout the country. Our unemployment coffers um, are running dry in many states. And then I would add a fifth, um, and that is uh, the healthcare system itself uh, with uh, the, the desperate needs uh, still uh, with the health uh, care facilities are running close to capacity in many places. They need that help. So those are the five areas that I think we need to uh, uh, supplement our earlier assistance right away. And then if we need to come back in a Biden presidency and a, and a new house and and possibly uh, a different Senate. Well, it will be a different Senate. It's just whether it's gonna be uh, Republican or Democratic controlled, then we, then we need to do that too. I don't think that we're gonna get out of COVID-19 with just one more emergency assistance package. I think it's gonna take more for us to get all the way through this incredible crisis. Same question, Nick. Uh, yes, sir. I, I guess I'd just like to know what you think should be in a package and, and how you might sort of play a role in that uh, should there be another uh, deal after you are sworn in. I, mean, I think Congressman Case, you know, he hit the pillars uh, that I would have um, reiterated as well. So those are, are all critical pieces of what a immediate um, uh, bill uh, or additional HEROES Act, CARES Act bill should should do. I think one thing to note in, in one of the pillars that he mentioned, which is support to uh, state and county governments, is the fact that if we have another package that we make sure that county governments and local municipalities get the direct funding that they need, which is not what happened the last time, right? The state of Hawaii got a big chunk of money, city and county of Honolulu got a big chunk of money, and uh, the city, uh, the county of Maui got a little bit of money for transportation, but Kauai and Hawaii Island and largely Maui had to rely on Governor Ige uh, to appropriate a certain allocation to those counties. And so I, want, I would like to make sure that we get direct money from the federal government to the other counties and the other counties are not left at the table or having um, to negotiate with the governor on how much they get. And, and I think that is, um, is, is really important and is uh, critical in a, in, a, in a new bill. Excellent, thanks.
Uh, Stephanie? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I'm with the Tribune Herald in Hilo. Um, and so my question kind of goes uh, along with the, the previous question. Um, you know, uh, when the, the new session convenes, um, you know, what are your specific priorities um, in addition to, to maybe um, assistance packages um, in regards to addressing the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, especially considering, you know, we're, the tourists are, are returning um, and we're, we're seeing rising numbers still in rural areas of the state, like especially here on the Big Island. Um, yeah, so, so what are your um, specific priorities um, once the, the session convenes? Well, so the session will convene on the 4th of January, 2021. Uh, that's what, that's the first um, work day of, of the new year. And um, the president will not be inaugurated until the 20th of January. So between now and then, like the previous uh, question, I'm not sure if a HEROES Act will be passed by the 116th Congress. If it, even if it is, like Congressman Kay said, uh, there, there most certainly will need to be an infrastructure package um, for all of our states. And, and it's our job to make sure Hawaii gets as much uh, money in that infrastructure package as, as, as we can. At the same time, I'm looking forward to a Biden administration that starts uh, at the top, that, that has a, a consistent voice for the, for the country and how to deal with um, the coronavirus and, and a, uh, a CDC and a Department of Health that can provide clear guidance to the states and what we need to do um, to make sure that the health and safety and welfare of, of the people of Hawaii and our country are first and foremost. You know, it's, it's obvious that that hasn't happened and we have a surge in coronavirus cases happening all across our country. Even here in Hawaii, our numbers are back to over 100 a day. Uh, probably because of Halloween and the elections. And so until we have a um, tested and, and, and fully approved, FDA approved vaccine that can be distributed, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of hard times ahead uh, for, for us. And things like a national mask mandate, um, more uh, protective measures that we can do um, for our communities and, the, and the, that equipment that we can provide is going to be absolutely essential uh, to minimize uh, COVID-19. I don't think it's ever going to completely go away until we can um, successfully distribute a, a, you know, a vaccine that, that we can distribute. Yeah, and I completely ag I agree with uh, Akai's um, answer there. Um, two, two comments here. First of all, like many, many other issues, COVID-19 doesn't care about congressional district lines. Um, and our responsibility together is to represent the entire state, to help the entire state. So um, if, if, I can, if I can help uh, Hawaii Island uh, in any way, I'm sure uh, that Kai would view it as uh, helping Oahu as well. Um, this just is not the kind of subject that you stand on, on, on you know, ar arbitrary boundaries that, uh, that are not applicable. And that's actually true of most issues that you deal with in Hawaii. There are some specific issues that are district issues, but very infrequently. And so uh, that's the value of the teamwork. Uh, from my perspective, um, I keep on going back to it and people say, what are your priorities other than COVID-19? And I keep on saying COVID-19 is my priority. It has to be. Uh, we are seeing a record level of, of infection across the country now, a severe third spike. Um, we are not immune to that here in Hawaii. We thought we were, uh, you know, in the, in the middle of the summer. Uh, when unfortunately we we uh, slacked off while the rest of the country was 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 having that second spike, we can't make that mistake again, and so it's very really critical uh, that we all work on COVID nineteen. For me, my my priority after that though is the appropriations committee uh, and being able uh, to again serve on that committee into the 117th Congress and to help uh, not only our country with the funding that it needs uh, to get through COVID nineteen and many other needs, but Hawaii specifically. Uh, so that is always going to be my priority um, as long as I'm on that committee and even after. Stephanie, just to follow up on that, uh, and, and just like Congressman Kate said, you know, that, that uh, follow-up stimulus bill to get uh, us through this economic recession is going to be critical. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm 
you know, one of my top committees that I'd like to serve on is the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. So I can carry the, the weight for both the first and second congressional district on that committee. With Congressman Case on appropriations, I think that's a fantastic combination for Hawaii in the House. Uh, but beyond that, I think we need to learn from what is happening uh, over the last nine months, how uh, the coronavirus and, and basically uh, the crippling of our uh, tourism industry and economy uh, has severely, um, you know, exposed, uh, you know, many, many deep uh, economic issues that Hawaii has and, and the vulnerabilities that we have. So one of the committees that I'm super excited to hopefully be able to serve on is a committee on agriculture, because I truly believe in diversifying Hawaii's economy. And I, I really believe that agriculture is a key part of Hawaii's uh, success. This is not anything new. Many people that have come before me have said the exact same thing, but we just haven't ever done it because we fall back to tourism and the military. But I'm really looking forward to being a member on the Ag Committee, if I can serve on that committee. The 2022 Farm Bill is shaping up. 98% of all agriculture produced in Hawaii comes from the second congressional district. There's so much opportunity there. Um, you know, I, I really wanna help and, and be a member of Congress for Hawaii that just grabs a bull by the horns and just uh, um, is able to, to take agriculture to a whole nother level in the state. Thank you guys. Uh, Annalise. Yes, um, yeah, I just wanted to ask another if no other people uh, wanted a chance first. Um, just following up on what you've been saying about COVID uh, CARES Act funds and whether we'll see another batch, um, wanted to get your sense of the challenges once you do secure funding. Uh, locally though, the distribution here is you know, fraught with delays as we've seen with you know, the rent relief program and the unemployment program and just in general, getting money out in a timely manner to people who really need them. Is there a way that, um, how do you plan on uh, working with, I guess the local governments here to ensure that that money is spent quickly once it's secured? Well, much of the last uh, eight months for me has been exactly that, working with uh, the state and local governments, but that's been primarily uh, focused on getting the money from the federal government to the state and local governments and other programs, by the way. Uh, we think that we have now uh, gotten about uh, $10.2, $10.3 billion of CARES Act funding uh, to and throughout Hawaii uh, through about 76, 77 federal programs. And so uh, that certainly has been a major undertaking. Uh, it, is, it is correct. I think that uh, in many cases, uh, the state and local governments uh, uh, sometimes had trouble getting all of that $10.2 billion. They didn't get all of that $10.2 billion, by the way. They got $1.25 billion out of the $10.2 billion. So $10.2 billion went out there pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. And we're, we're, we're really dealing with the monies that went to the state <clears throat> and to the city and county of Honolulu. Um, where there were, I think, legitimate uh, concerns at the beginning about where that money actually should go. I think they've got it pretty well straightened out now. I saw the other day that the city and county of Honolulu, for example, um, has now allocated uh, virtually all of its $383 million, uh, and the state definitely has the same uh, plans to get the remainder of its money out there um, and uh, to, to plus up the uh, unemployment side of things as it, as it still needs to. So. Um, it was slow, um, but I think it is getting out there uh, um, uh, faster than, than uh, perhaps the public perception uh, at the moment is, but it can always stand to be improved. And certainly the next round of emergency assistance funding, I hope that we are all uh, far more uh, conversant in how the money flows from the feds down to the state and local governments and, and programs here in Hawaii. And we are all much better set up to handle the outflow from those governments out into the actual communities in the volumes that are gonna to need to be um, handled in order for us to really um, help with this continuing uh, crisis. One thing I would add is, and of course, you know, I won't be a member of Congress so yet um, by the end of the year, but one of the things that might need to be discussed by our current delegation is a possible 
you know, extension of that December 31st deadline, even if it's for another 30 days or 60 days. I do know by talking to the respective county mayors that they are having a difficult time in some cases spending down that money. Uh, you know, the, the state can, can put it into UI and can allocate it pretty quickly if they needed to. But it's not that easy to spend $50 million, uh, you know, overnight. And you need to follow procurement processes. You need to make sure you're, you're, you're you know, distributing the funds adequately and, and uh, with full transparency. And that has been a difficult challenge as, uh, you know, many of our, our county governments are really in uncharted waters here. And, and, and and they need a little, they need an extension. And so that's something that um, our current delegation um, might be able to look at. I'm not sure. Um, but, but clearly, I think our, our, some of our counties that I've talked to need a little bit more time to expend those funds. And the last thing we want to do extension. is give a penny or anything back to um, the Treasury at the end of this year. Um. I'm sorry, in brief answer to Kai, the, the bills that are actually before the Congress right now all would include um, an extension of that deadline at the end of the year. And I think that's what a lot of folks are, are hoping comes in. Not helping at all uh, that our state and local governments have to plan against uh, an end of the year deadline right now, um, even though it may well be extended by the time we get there. So you're looking in the chat. Does anyone have any more questions? Oh, let's see. I have another question. Okay, Casey Harlow at HPR. Hi, yes. Um, I guess, will you guys both uh, support uh, Speaker Pelosi to continue as House Speaker? Um, I'll take that. I do, I do support uh, Nancy Pelosi continuing as a Speaker. Um, this is going to be a very, very difficult time for our Congress, uh, the transition to a, to a new president, to a Biden presidency, a lot of uh, uncertainty within uh, uh, you know, Congress itself. And I think she's the right person to continue in that job. Uh, it's a tough job to kind of learn on the job. And I think that she is the right person to, to, to take us through the next two years. Having said that, I think we all <clears throat> have lessons to learn uh, from the election, I think especially as I referred to uh, uh, earlier on, uh, we many um, of our of our uh, uh, fellow citizens across the country choose 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 Donald Trump uh, to continue as president. Uh, here in Hawaii, we have to recognize that that one in three voters uh, decided uh, that Donald Trump was the better choice over over Joe Biden. And I think uh, I think for me, uh, that takes some honest soul searching within my own party. Uh, in Congress within my own Democratic caucus about are we doing everything that we need to do uh, to, to uh, lead the country, not just a party, not just part of a party. Uh, that is our responsibility in the U.S. House. We are in the majority, uh, but the majority uh, doesn't mean you get to do just whatever you want, whenever you want. Uh, you need to nonetheless uh, try to reach out and include all Americans in, in, your, in your caucus and in your thinking. And I think that as we go into uh, the next uh, two years uh, uh, with Nancy Pelosi as speaker, and I think that's going to happen. Nobody in our caucus has uh, announced that uh, they are interested in running um, against her in our, in our elections are next week. I return to Washington uh, this weekend uh, for our elections next week. I think that every leader uh, in our caucus, including uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, needs to join into the, the honest assessment of where we are uh, what we just heard from the country, all of the country, uh, and uh, try to adopt um, all of that into the work of the U.S. House, including my Democratic caucus. Yes, I intend to support Speaker Pelosi to remain as Speaker of the House for the 117th Congress. Thank you. All Anyone right. Anyone else? Is that it, Kai? Yeah, no one else is in the chat. Okay, Going well, once. Um, again, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. By the way, I should have said earlier, this is, uh, this is absolutely not the first joint appearance that uh, Congressman Elect Kaheli and I uh, plan on. We've already talked about uh, doing something like this uh, quite frequently. Um, this is about us being teammates on the same team and pulling together for Hawaii. And again, Kai, I'm so excited for you and uh, 
you know, happy travels and uh, have a great week of orientation. Who would have ever thought two Hilo boys would be serving together in Congress? And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's special. I can't wait. Uh, look forward to seeing you this weekend. Thank you, Congressman. Okay. Aloha. Okay. Aloha, everyone.